Hey there, everyone, Paler here, and welcome back to Star Citizen. Today, we are getting to know the Aurora series of ships. In particular, this here is the Aurora LN. So, as with everything else, this is all subject to change. In fact, I'm going to be very vague on a lot of the numbers going forward with the Aurora, because we are very close to 2.8, uh, I'm sorry, 2.6 on December 8th targeted for December 8th, which is going to change a lot of the combat speed. It's going to do a lot of changes to the overall systems. Uh, plus things like the weapons, they're not balanced yet. So there, there's a lot of changes to come. We're just going to be talking very general purposes for this ship. And the Aurora is also, it's, um, well, it's an entry level ship. So there's not a whole lot of anything spectacular to talk about here as it's basically the cheapest ship you can get in the game. Now the Aurora does come in four or five different variants. The LN model, which you're looking at here, is the most expensive variant at $35. So even the most expensive one, in my opinion, is pretty darn cheap. Where most people are gonna come from though, is if they're looking to buy into the game at whatever the low price point is, be it either $45 for just Star Citizen or $60 for Star Citizen and Squadron 42, they're gonna be looking at two options, either the Aurora or the Mustang. And when you do get into that point, in my opinion, you have two questions you need to ask yourself. First, do you ever plan on upgrading beyond that ship, i.e. doing a cross chassis upgrade to something higher? Two, if you're not planning on doing the first one, what is it that you want out of the game? Do you want something more utilitarian, something with a little more robust usefulness, or do you want a combat ship? So to answer this, like if you go through and if the answer to the first one is yes, you plan on upgrading at some point, you're gonna to wanna to go for the Mustang. The Mustang is worth $5 more on the store than the Aurora. So when you go to do cross chassis upgrades, if you're going to a $50 ship, going there from the Mustang is gonna cost you $5 less than going there from the Aurora. That's just the difference of the value of the ships over on the storefront, unless they change that sometime in the future. The second one is, if you want a pure combat ship, the Mustang is again the one you go for. The Aurora, as entry-level ships go between the two of them, is the utility, the utility ship. It brings about some utility, obviously that's the, hence the word, uh, that the Mustang doesn't. In fact, most ships under $100 don't. But it does so at a very entry level. So, the ship is not durable. Even the LN model here, which again is the, the higher end one, this is the combat model, which is supposed to have an improved shield generator, and none of this is balanced, so it may get better, is a very weak ship. One really good pass, one good volley of any type of fire is generally going to knock out your engine, put you in a spiral, possibly just outright destroy you. Any really good ship is going to wreck this thing very quickly. But again... $35 entry level ship, should it really be too powerful? Well, I wish it was a little more durable than this. Uh, in terms of firepower, the default loadout of the base ships, not the LN models, are just these two guys up here. Uh, two Mark II, or these uh, Mark III M3A laser cannons. So there's one here, one on the direct other side. Uh, so those are your default loadout. And there is some type of missile rack on the other versions, though I believe they only have two missiles rather than four. This one actually has a four rack mount on top. Uh, I might be wrong on that. This is something that's changing with the, the new missile system. So we have to see how that all falls out. Uh, but they, they do come with that. Now the LN model, this model here, does come with two additional weapons down here on like these lower struts, which are Bulldog Repeaters here and here, which are pretty darn good cannons. I like the Bulldog Repeaters. Unfortunately, the Aurora doesn't have the cooling to really use these efficiently, not by default. It does have two cooling modules in the back here that I could upgrade and swap out. Uh, you can see here, there's a bunch of different ones from the other ships I have. Uh, we're not gonna worry about that right now though. We're just talking about the base default model, but there are two cooling back there. So you could maybe get a little bit more out of these. Now, 
the chassis upgrades just are what the default loadout is. So all Aurora models do have these hard points down here for additional weapons. They just don't come with them by default. Again, the missile rack up here, if the four rack is mounted on the LN version, it means you could in game buy the four rack mount and put it on there. Or you could go with rather than size two, I think you'd be able to go with up to eight size ones. It might be six size ones uh, and 2.6. We'll have to see how that actually plays out. So in terms of combat, it's it actually packs an okay amount of firepower, better than you would initially expect when you look at all four of these. Uh, these Bulldog Repeaters, while you can't actually fire them for a huge extended amount of time in a short burst, the combination of those guys and the M3s puts out a pretty good firepower. And these four Mark II D Dominator twos actually pack a really good punch too. But you only have four of them, whereas a lot of combat ships are rocking six, eight, 12 missiles four is a little on the low side but again i'm comparing a 35 dollars entry level ship to things like the gladius and the hornet and well they're entirely different ships this is not designed to compete with those ships so it's probably not a fair comparison it's more fair to compare it to the mustang i don't have enough experience with the mustang though so i'm just gonna skip over that uh, and continue on now Compare well now I am gonna actually compare it to the Mustang, but not in terms of combat. Compared to the Mustang, what the Aurora does have is it's going to have the ability to actually carry a fairly good amount of cargo. Not inside here. Inside here is a lot of just wasted space, similar to like the 300 series. If you watch my video on the 300, now where the 300 series gets like 10 cargo units in its little loading dock area, whatever you would call this area. I don't think this guy can get anything in here at all. You know, it's just a little step up to get right into the cockpit, uh, a door on either side, and now I'm stuck, there we go, climb back out. There's nothing that could go there. What the Aurora will do, and can will do, be able to do, hopefully in 3.0, is you can actually get a cargo pod right here in the back of the ship. This is gonna be very similar to like, if you've ever seen the big cargo tr container uh, ships come into a dock and then the cranes lift them off and put them down on the back of a truck. They throw some pins in to, to lock them down and drive away. That's basically what you're gonna be looking at here. You're gonna be able to come in, pick up cargo containers that'll mount in underneath here, or I guess you, you'll, you'll set it up ahead of time and it'll spawn with the cargo container here, which you'll be able to put cargo inside of. And they're gonna come in two, possibly even three or four different sizes, uh, depending on what you get. And basically they'll come in different lengths uh, in order to get more in there, or maybe a little bit different height. Obviously they can only be so deep down to where they're touching the ground when the landing gear's down, so they can't go you know, super deep down underneath the ground or anything like that. But you will be able to put a cargo container back here, which is going to give this ship cargo carrying capacity. You know, that, that makes sense. To the point where I don't know the exact numbers on it, but I think it's going to be the most cargo a ship can carry for under $100. At $100, the Cutlass Black comes in, uh, and the Cutlass Black is going to have more cargo capacity than this thing does. The oddball is a bit the Avenger. Uh, the Avenger comes in different variants, but one variant doesn't have anything in the back end. With nothing in the back end, the Avenger may be roughly the same, but I think it's a bit less than this container just because it's not nearly as deep this way uh, as the Aurora's cargo container possibly could be. So that's, that's the first thing. You're going to be able to carry cargo with this thing. That's something the Mustang can't do. That's something the 300i really can't do. Uh, the Gladius can't do. Uh, what other ships are in that price range? The Avenger kind of can, but we'll see it to a lesser amount. The second thing that the Aurora has is a bed. Right here is a bed. Let me go ahead and climb in there, which is going to allow you basically, if you die doing EVA, Star Marine type things, you'll be able to respawn back in your ship. I think this is also going to play something into logging out, logging back in. Uh, it'll be a safe place to log out and log in in the game, though don't quote me on that. I'm not sure that's entirely nailed down for when the Persistent Universe comes online, but you will be able to spawn back in your ship if your ship is not destroyed when you die as a character thanks to the bet. Similar to how the cargo capacity for under $100 is probably the best. I think this is, again, the only ship for under $100 with a bed on it. We already have looked at the Cutlass. The Cutlass does have beds. I don't think the Avenger does. I, I know the 300 doesn't. I know the Mustang doesn't. I don't believe the Avenger has a bed either, though I might be wrong there. So that's mainly what you get for your investment. Be it the $35, the $30, or the $20 version, you get a ship 
that is going to be able to haul some cargo, can have four hard mount weapon points, can have a missile rack on top, but isn't very well armed and is also relatively slow. Uh, about the best thing I can really say about this ship is I like the paint job. I, I do like the green gold with the white stripe down it. I wonder if I can glitch it out and get back up inside. Uh, come back around here. Sometimes you can glitch out and get up on the roof. Climb up. And then get into the cockpit. Well, might as well look at the cockpit while we're getting in. The cockpit is middle of the road, from what I would say. Uh, it's fairly basic in terms of overall electronics, but in terms of like field of view, it's kind of middle of the road. So if we look around here, you can see there's there's a pretty good field of view all the way around, but there's a lot of these like support beams and everything coming across the front of it that do limit your field of view also. So while the actual like maximum theoretical field of view isn't bad. There's just a lot of noise in terms of these pillars in front of your your line of sight uh, or whatever you'd call these struts blocking it. Let's see if we can climb back out. And then maybe glitch through up to the top. Sometimes this works where when you get here, the character doesn't get all the way out and it looks like I got all the way out. Yeah, I did. Didn't work. Thought I was gonna be able to glitch through up to the top. Go ahead and up. Now I'm getting back into the seat. All right, we'll cut to combat footage while I finish up here. The Aurora, I don't know. I, I wish for an entry-level ship it was a little more powerful than it is. And none of this is finalized. All this is going to get another balancing pass. So they could go through and they could really up how survivable it is. And for me, that would be okay. You, you just Your entry-level ship that you're going to be giving new pilots when they join the game, you want, to, you want it to be forgiving for them. And there's going to be a real turnoff if a pilot goes ahead and they get their Aurora and they, they invest all their money into a cargo pod and they fill it with cargo and they're going to go off and start making their fortunes and the first time out a uh, Gladius comes along, one strafe, boom, you're dead, there goes everything lost. That's going to be a real turnoff for a lot of players. And yeah, that's my, like, it just, I wish it was a lot more durable than it is. That may come in time, we don't know. Uh, they are also talking a lot of variants. I'm going to link to a video down below again. The The video for the Aurora actually makes it seem really cool. There's a lot of their changing these out. Bigger guns, smaller guns. Obviously, you can mix the guns out. They add in this scoop area, which is on the LN, which is supposed to increase its speed. It's still a slow ship, uh, even with that on there, unless it hasn't actually been implemented correctly with the LN, and, and that will give it more speed later on. Ugh. I don't know. It's talking aside, not talking the Aurora. If I was going to recommend to a new player coming into the game what to get, I would say buy the $60 package with the Mustang and then instantly do a CCU upgrade from the Mustang to the Avenger. That's going to cost you about $75. And for $75, I think the Avenger is a very solid ship with good utility. It has the cargo bed, it can be set up for a bounty hunting ship, can be set up for interdiction, not interdiction, but EMP warfare. It, it's got fairly good firepower, it's reasonably fast, it's maneuverable, and it, it's, it has some survivability to it also. Now that's $75, whereas the entry version of this ship with the game and everything is going to cost you $60. And for $15 difference, I just, I think the the Aurora for that cost difference needs to be a stronger ship, in my opinion. And it's just not. Even though if you buy the Aurora standalone, it's only like $35, whereas the Avenger, the low-end Avenger, is like $60. So the, the price difference gets thrown off a little bit there just because you're got, getting the, the pack with everything. But, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of the Aurora series. I, it does have surprisingly better firepower than I initially thought before I picked it up and was messing around with it. Uh, you know, the LN can hit reasonably hard, especially with those four missiles, but once you've fired your four missiles, you're kind of in trouble after that. You're going to be overheating the Badger repeaters, you don't have the cooling. Uh, oh, one other minor concern about this. It, it might not even be minor. So, entry-level ship. To me, entry level means someone getting into this is likely to be flying with keyboard and mouse. None of the weapons are gimbaled. They are all hardpoint mounted. Now, for me, that doesn't really matter. 
I, I fly with joystick, so hardpoint mounted is perfectly fine. In fact, I prefer it. I tend to go through my ships, rip out the gimbals, and put on a larger caliber straight firing weapon just because it fits the joystick better. But I believe most entry-level players are going to be keyboard and mouse. And in my opinion, gimbal mounted works better for keyboard mouse flying. So it just seems a little odd that the ship doesn't have any type of assistance in terms of gimbals for new players to learn and get comfortable with the flying system, the aiming, the targeting, and all of that. It seems a little odd. You could add in gimbals to the ones on the wings, I believe. Let me take a look here. Yeah, you could attach size 2 gimbals to that. Can we attach gimbals to the ones down here? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I don't believe you can, because a gimbal downsizes you one. So going from size 1, you can't go down to a size 0 by adding a gimbal. So you can only gimbal two of the weapons, no matter what two of the weapons are forward firing. That's something they could change. You know, they could change those over to size twos and then add gimbals into it. Uh, and then you could have four gimbaled size one weapons, which would probably be a much better entry level ship for new players to learn on in terms of flying and shooting. Uh, I don't know. It's it's not a big deal to me again, but it, it, it does seem odd to not have any gimbaled weapons on the entry level ship. Well, there you go, guys. That's the Aurora. I'm not very impressed with it. My recommendation would not be the ship. As I just said, I'd recommend going for the Avenger. Uh, but until next time, though, this has been Power. Thanks for watching.